Say what you like, but... Two hours later... I'm really enjoying mastering the gauntlet. Hello, my fellow sorcerers then, and welcome as I share with you the recipe for leaderboard success. Oh yes, now that I've really got stuck in and really gone to town on, at least for me, this really fun new game mode. It's essentially a speedrun puzzle to solve where your build is only one of the pieces and the rest are your chosen route and your execution of it and that just really tickles my fancies. And as you can see already, yeah, it is quite the experience. The speed, the teleports, the death as you just absolutely blitz, thunderstorm your way to, uh, well, that ultimate victory and that worthy, worthy position. So currently, uh, my uh, score sits at the 577,000 mark, which means that I am currently at, I think, one of the greatest ranks possible. Nice. And you may be asking yourself, oh, well, you know, there's sorcerers with like 800, 900,000. What's, what's going on there? Well, I'll tell you what's going on there. If we look at, you know, a few of the people around me that don't have their profile hidden, you will see something particular. And that particular is they all have bloody Harlequin's Crest and Starless Skies. You know what I don't have? Bloody Harlequin's Crest and Starless Skies. I have looked through every non-private profile above me in the ladder, and every single person that I can see has either Harlequin's, Starless, or both. Because yes, they're both very good, and if I had them, I would be wearing them. But I am at least very proud and happy that what I have come up with can compete like this without them. That says a lot, and I have no doubt were I to get them, Daryl, please, I uh, would be comfortably at the 800k plus mark. But in any case, I digress. I will be sharing with you, of course, the build without the UB Uniques, and I will be sharing it with the UB Uniques. Spoiler alert, it's put the helmet instead of the helmet I'm going to recommend, and put the ring instead of the other ring I'm going to recommend, but, you know, I'll reiterate that when we get to the gear. And other than that, yeah, I'm very excited and happy to present to you my ultimate sorcerer gauntlet speed stomper that is not just glorious fun to play, but, as you can see, incredibly effective. God damn. All right. Here we go. The skill tree is first, so the skill tree is first. <laughs> okay, our clash, a full five out of five in there, and no, we won't be doing any burning synergy, so hey, that's already quite refreshingly nice. In any case, we want to take it to movement speed, as, you know, getting through the place as quickly as possible is the ideal way to go. We don't need help with the cooldown reduction, so that's all well and good. Over to your cause, then, where we get our first enchantment slot in Fireball. Yeah! This is actually incredibly clutch here. I tested it out and I was blown away by just how much consistency it adds. Because we're facing relatively weak enemies, as soon as one dies, yeah, the fireball chain goes off and they all do. It lets you really not have to worry about, you know, the little dudes on the fringes and just know they will be cleaned up automatically in the chain explosion, adding to your score and just freeing you up to keep moving forward. Your lightning spears will be flying everywhere, killing things, fireball will proc, and you are good. It really is the kind of secret sauce here, and has been by far and away the best performing second enchantment, the other being teleport, as you saw and will get to, because we need it to be, we need the movement speed, that I have used. Then we want to go to enhanced, just so we can get to destructive, which does affect the passive explosion, though sadly the enhanced does not, as we're not casting it. 
it. In any case, then we go down to our defensives where we get flame shield and just enhanced flame shield. We don't need the heal. Again, the gauntlet is too easy for it to be a requirement. We're not going to be using a single defensive affix or aspect. You just want maximum speed and then still maximum but a little bit less maximum damage. So the speed on enhanced flame shield, yeah, very, very nice. Over then to teleport where we want the full five ranks. The cooldown reduction per rank is too good to ignore and the more we can teleport, well, the more we can clear, the faster we can go. Essentially, Gauntlet boils down to, once you have the best path possible, of course, getting as far along it as you can, which is why having Harlequin's Crest is so good because it's another four ranks in teleport, which is an even shorter cooldown to say nothing of the extra damage and such. It really adds up. If you go from an 8.2 to like a 6.2 with those extra four ranks, well, that's two seconds out of every eight you have now gained, which over the course of the time you have in there, yeah, it makes a big difference, and it's why you see such a score discrepancy between those with Shaco and those without. In any case, over to Enhanced Teleport, and we do get Shimmering, as we still need a little bit of DR, we don't want to go crazily reckless, and this is a nice one to have. Then we get Full Glass Cannon, we just want damage, we don't mind the extra damage taken, because again, very easy, and then we have two in Elemental Attunement. We don't have a lot of lucky hit, so this happening a bit more often, resetting that teleport is nice. That said, this is only two because it was one point left over and this felt like the best place to put it, but you can put this one point anywhere else that you want. Then we have the second enchantment slot, which is, yes, your teleport, so we can really spam blink around and get things done. Over here, then, we have the usual align into the protection. Yes, the constant barrier is nice and needed to not die, but uh, the barrier synergy is always there, too, with the likes of Conceited and so on. Three out of three in your Conjuration Mastery, as uh, we will always have a lot of both for Ice Blades, and Lightning Spears flying, which is a lot of extra damage. Get said Ice Blades and take it to Enhanced and Summoned. Helps a little bit with the cooldown, but mainly it's just here for the Frost Damage for Tell Rashes. If we didn't need that, we probably wouldn't have it. Then, yes, you're a Lightning Spear and make sure that it goes to Invoked. Even though it won't be on our bars, because we have almost 100%, or to be fair, pretty much 100% uptime on Unstable Currents, we are throwing out so many of these and them stunning everything is so, so good for us. Then we go over to Mastery, where one of the reasons that Lightning Spear stunning everything is so good for us is because it keeps triggering Shocking Impact, which we get 3 out of 3, which is enough to kill it, which then triggers your Fireball Enchant, and you see what I mean. You're just moving along with Unstable Currents, attacking the air to reset the dodge on your Teleport cooldown, thanks to our boots being Flicker Step, and then the Lightning Spears that you have summoned will go kill things, causing a chain reaction that kills all the other things, and that really is a lovely synergy. Then we want 5 out of 5 into Ball Lightning, as this is a R-Clash Ball Lightning hybrid build. We want all the Ball Lightnings coming out of Unstable Currents to stay there to rotate and we will be casting a few of them ourselves too, and we want to enhance it with, well, enhanced. We don't need crackling energy, and we don't need it to stun, so we can save a point there, but if you did want to reassign that one single elemental human point, you can certainly do so here. Then to your ultimate section, which for us is ironically the penultimate section. That's not really ironic, is it? Well, we get causing currents just to get 3 out of 3 conduction for more move fast yes, get through dungeon quicker and then your actual and stable currents and the attack speed amp, but we don't need the crackling energy. Our key passive will be Esu's Frosity for that Ancient Flame aspect. It also affects the actual fireball, so that's a nice synergy there, but mainly we just want that sweet 75% attack speed on our amulet, both for just generally casting all the things and ball lightning tick rate. So that's where we are at. So with the bars all set up then, your lovely teleport evade in place, it's time to talk gear. You want to make sure you have a dagger instead of a wand, as we don't need a lucky hit, and the damage to close is lovely. And then we want ourselves crit damage to vulnerable on your weapons, health in your armor, and armor in your jewelry. Passive
past that then, aspect wise, we have Rapid. Yes, we will have Ancient Flame, but we want enough raw attack speed even when Ancient Flame isn't triggered to really spam out random skills in order to pump unstable currents and to reset evade because when we attack that evade cooldown does go down and that directly translates to our movement and essentially in a microcosm you will be traveling through the dungeon like this teleport hit 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 teleport hit 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 teleport the faster we can make that happen without any external factors the better so rapid does come in handy it's also just you know a nice damage increase when we're facing one of the bosses without a shrine up over to your focus then we want gravitational I keep those ball lightnings where they need to be and that's very self apparent on your ring then you want the buffed overwhelming currents 30% more shock skills coming out of your unstable currents means 30% more ball lightnings which is a huge chunk of our damage and 30% more lightning spears which is a huge chunk of our range coverage mopping up everything so we don't have to waste time killing little stragglers and just range triggering that lovely fireball explosion chain then we have ourselves, yes, Ancient Flame for that 75% attack speed on your amulet. Everything else then is very much unique -y. We want to flick a step so we can consistently have Unstable Currents up, active and doing its thing, because while Unstable Currents is doing its thing, well, have a look. We teleport and it takes a little bit to get it down, but with Unstable Currents up, we teleport and, yeah, suddenly it doesn't take a a lot to uh, keep it down so the longer that unstable currents is active the faster we move and the better we do so a uh, flicker step very much key to that when we're not using cooldown reduction from anywhere else other than just raw affixes to bolts for the extra damage and the ball lightning the mana is nice it's just good all we care about is damage and to bolts is the legs for that then we want pain gorges the lightning spears will go mark everyone the ball lightnings will mark everyone everything you do except Except Arclash will mark everyone, and then the Arclash will echo and kill. But even against single target, the affixes are amazing, the extra basic skill damage is amazing, and, you know, the effect itself is still amazing as the target you're hitting is still marked, so it's getting echoed. Raiment is self-explanatory, is one of the reasons Sorcerer is proving to be the dominant class in Gauntlet. Well, this and the extreme speed and precision we can move with spam teleports, grouping everything, killing it, the fireball chain goes off. Yeah, what's not to love? And then helmet wise, well, actually, no, tell rashes. Everything has tell rashes. You know, tell rashes is going to be here. It's too good to ignore. Too much damage. It's just a perfect piece of gear, and I love it. In any case, I am wearing Andariels, the one Uber I have been blessed with this season. I have gotten seriously unlucky, as it's better than anything else that isn't Harlequin's Crest. The poison means we get a fourth stack of Talrasher, so yay, and the attack speed is certainly fine, but I mean the resource gen, the cooldown reduction, and of course the plus four skill ranks, oh, so much better. Now if you don't have Andariel's Visage or Harlequin's, then you want to whack on Godslayer Crown. If you do have Harlequin Crest, wear Harlequin's Crest. Put it on, you're good. If you also have Starless Skies, replace your normal aspect ring, put it on, drop the unstable currents extra chance, and you are good. It by itself makes ball lightning do its thing without you needing to really invest anything else into it. It's ridiculously busted, so yes, put those two on. And if you have both Uber Uniques on, Harlequin's Crest and Starless Skies, we no longer need the help of Pain Gorge's Gauntlets, and you can replace them with a normal pair like this, with something like Conceited on, to play with our Barrier Synergy, and we get more out of it that way. So, with that in mind, let's talk affixes. One that you very much specifically need that I'm going to draw your attention to right away is Shrine Buff Duration. It works on the score multiplier shrines, which means it's essentially mandatory because an extra 24% of it is great. Sadly, we have to wear Flicker Step, so we can't get the Boots version, but you want it on your neck. 
as do you want Devouring Blaze. Despite us not using the Firebolt enchantment, we will be setting enemies on fire, and the extra damage from Devouring Blaze is nice. Granted, we don't have actual points into it because we're stretched thin, so being able to still take advantage of it from our necklace is really, really good for us. It's not the focus, but it very much does help. Past that, you do want your ranks of mastery, you want cooldown reduction everywhere that you can get it, basic skill damage, basic skill attack speed, and then after that, you want your move speed on your necklace too. Mana cost reduction is also fantastic, as is resource generation, and then general damage up, like crit strike damage, crit strike damage with lightning, and so on and so forth. Crit chance, very, very nice as well, and then your vulnerable damage, your intelligence, and your close etc etc so to the seneschal once again i will be telling you essentially the same thing as always because there is nothing better flash of adrenaline with genesis duration tactical permanent 50 percent multiplicative damage increase yeah it is just peak. Over on the other side, however, we have Tempest, again, quite usual for 100% uptime of the tunings. Evernight for the plus four ranks of skills, so that's really nice. Four more ranks of teleport, yeah, lovely. And then we want to go for efficiency support for the 15% extra crit, and then lastly, burning support. So those necklace ranks of devouring blaze take place, and we will have a bit of paragon board to support it too in a moment. And we don't need help with vulnerable uptime because we have so many lightning spears that everything is always going to be vulnerable anyway, even without it. So how do we pilot this then? Essentially, if you have mana, cast ball lightning. If you don't have mana, cast Arclash as a base rule. If you have Style of Skies, you'll be casting a lot more ball lightnings. Every time Unstable Currents is up, use it, and we want to keep it up the entire way through, so make sure you keep teleporting very precisely onto enemies as you progress through the dungeon. Careful pathing through the gauntlet. Don't waste one by teleporting like a foot into a wall like that. Whoops. But you have to make sure that you pass through enemies so you get that unstable currents. Past that, use the flame shield on cooldown for the pure movement speed of it, and use your own teleport to support your dodge teleport to uh, get, well, where you need to be. Ice blades on cooldown as the final thing. Other than that, it's really just about your precise placement of yourself as you move through your intended path. You really just kind of want to press all your things, but it's where and you press them that really matters. So, that said, it's time for the one big important tip. We have ourselves the ability to use potions in the gauntlet, which means you want to have Acrobat's Elixirs. They reduce the cooldown of your evade, meaning you can take it from that near 10 seconds to just under 8. That's a big difference. Two seconds across the whole gauntlet adds up given how frequently we will be casting this. So make sure you craft them and you keep them drunk while in. Personally, I don't like that you can use elixirs because they're annoying to keep a supply of and manage, yada yada, and it feels like you can only attempt it while you have one up, but it is what it is, so it is worth pointing out. Then we talk Paragon. Stay with me point for point, you know how this goes. Heading just up and right through Elementalist and then through the Intelligence here to the Glyph Elementalist for that extra 15% multiplicative. Grab Erudite and then grab Elemental Balance and keep on going through it into Enchantment Master, the heart of any good Sorcerer build. Head over to the right, go to your Glyph where we have Reinforce for the DR with a Barrier and then get yourself Elemental Balance and then head left past here and up up to Elementalist, up and through it, all the way over to this magic node. We may as well grab this as it's right here and it's just one point, but it's not strictly necessary, but mainly head up and get your Enchantment Master. One, it makes the fireballs when enemies die do more damage, but you know, that's whatever. It also makes your teleport spacebar dodge have a 20% shorter cooldown, which in gauntlet terms, again, 
is phenomenal and we can't really pass this up it's just too good at what it does and uh, you kind of do need it then we head up from the glyph get this entire cluster around erudite and then go grab ruinous now we want to head right into static surge we want those lightning spears to be killing stunned enemies alongside the raiment things need to die instantly so all this lovely stun damage yeah works wonders so head towards the glyph where we'll be putting destruction and because of that you want to grab every little bit of dexterity you can in range have it arranged so uh, this actual legendary node is just straight right from the gate then we want to head up all the way to here to grab paralyzing and then make sure we veer right after getting the incapacitate and its cluster to grab overwhelming there is a lot of stunned damage going on here now we want to go up from paralyzing over from this dex into the next board which will be your frigid fate board we want to head up here so we can eventually go get oppressive but for now go straight up through this double dex into exploit in this glyph slot and then head left through weakness in order to grab yourself frigid fate itself and then up for the extra dex past chilling after that then we can go back down and go south from our static surge board from this int straight to the gate and this is your burning instinct this mainly is here just to give us another glyph but because we do have burning on the center shell we do have ranks of devouring blaze on the neck yeah we may as well get some meaningful damage out of the board itself so we want to arrange it like this so the glyph is in the top left and then head towards it like so and in here we want to control again we want things to die as soon as a lightning spear stuns them or as soon as we teleport onto them so this helps that happen get yourself cinders and get yourself smoldering embers along with the decks to activate control and we are good and then a few points just to detop over to kindling for a little extra bump then finally on our final board we want to go right from this dex get oppressive continue on through it and then here we are with your elemental summoner primarily again this is just here to give us an extra glyph slot so we go straight towards it with it arranged like this through erudite and here is adept for our ball lightnings to be bigger and hurtier and then continue all the way past it to conjurer with the two ent below and the one into above to activate it so that makes up our paragon board and it really yeah i am quite pleased with this so there you have it everybody that is the build that i am pushing the gauntlet with though i fear i do need to stop pushing and go farm durial because i really am feeling not having those uber uniques they really push it over the edge but i'm still very happy to be at top 200 without them that's really nice to see and honestly thank you all so much for still being into the sorcerer builds i really love both the class and theory crafting and doing this stuff for you in other arpgs too and anything that you can make builds in it really is my jam and it means a lot that so many of you are into that for now then and until next time like you've enjoyed this subscribe and hit the bell for more consider supporting the future of the channel on patreon down below and until we meet again a good Bye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye